Hi everyone, my name is Felicia. So do you want to know how to prevent trichoderma in mushroom growing? So if you're a mushroom grower, you probably know trick is one of the biggest enemy, right? Because once that happens, it's pretty much done like end of story, right? So like we want to like prevent it from happening so you can maximize your yield, right? Um, so in this video, I'm going to share seven tips um, that you can prevent trick, say, in growing medicinal mushroom like lion's mane. Uh, I also create a cheat sheet for you to download. It's completely free. Uh, so include these seven tips. And then the last one is the game changer for me. Uh, so let's talk about it. So uh, I remember when I first started like this uh, growing journey. So um, I know like healthy mycelium should be white. Kind of like the color of like snow. Like that type of white. And I saw there this one part was like kind of like bright white. And then also like a ring shape too, like kind of weird. So I was asking my friend because he's more experienced than me, right? And then he was telling me, oh, no, that's trick. It's going to turn like green the next 24 hours. And then that's when like the spores spread, right? It's really dangerous. So um, so I remember in that one, I think the mistake I made was that it was too wet. So definitely when you um, pasteurize your substrate, you had to test the fuel capacity. So in that example, uh, I was using quiet vermiculi. So I add a little bit too much water to the vermiculi. So make sure uh, after you pasteurize your substrate, um, always test it. So there's a thing called field capacity test. Um, so you basically like you squeeze it. So after you pasteurize like the choir and the vermiculi or whichever you choose to use, uh, you do the squeeze test. So you do it by like um, you use your fist and then you like try to squeeze out like uh, uh, water from the substrate and ideally there should be only like a few drops of water. So if it's like a strain, that's too much. So um, the right fuel capacity is very important. Like too dry is not good, so the mushroom is not going to grow well. But too wet is going to result in contamination. And uh, so the second point, the second point I would say, you just have to make sure um, everything's like really clean. Um, make sure you disinfect everything with alcohol. Um, yeah, just make sure you're, you're cleaning everything on a regular basis or before you do any procedure. And also like if you have like those AC vents, uh, make sure it's closed. Unless you have like those professional clean that on like a regular basis. Uh, it's better to be close because there can be a lot of like contaminant in there that we cannot see and control. So the third point uh, would be invest in the air purifier if you have the budget for it. It really makes a big difference. Okay, so the fourth point would be um, after um, you pasteurize with like boiling water. So you don't have to do it, but I do that as an extra precaution and it's been working well for me. So I also do often pasteurization. So after like say I pasteurize like the quiet vermiculite with the boiling water the night before, I often pasteurize it for uh, 180 degree Fahrenheit for 3.5 hours or more. So it's longer than the recommended like a number of hours. Uh, I do it because when I first started, I was using like a thermometer to measure the internal temperature. And I realized depending on how big your container is to like uh, pasteurize the thing, right? It takes time for the whole thing to reach like the 180 degree Fahrenheit. So just to make it easy, because I like to make it easy and simple for me since like I'm very busy. Um, I just do it a little bit longer and then like 3.5 hours or more. And uh, it has been work like really, really well for me. So now let's talk about the fifth point. So the fifth one would be um, whatever container you use to grow your mushroom, I would say keep it closed. Don't expose it to fresh air exchange. So we usually call it the FAE uh, until it's fully colonized. So for me, I usually wait until I see like baby pins. Then I know it's like uh, definitely fully colonized. And then when it's fully colonized already, it's more resistant to contamination. And also like uh, some people use like micropore tape. So if you're the ones who use micropore tape, so they get passive FAE from day one already, right? So there's no need to open it up uh, before you see any baby pins, right? So the sixth point. Uh, so I remember like um, there's this one time I was like really busy. So I didn't really have time to take care of like uh, my mushroom. I call them my mushroom babies because they're kind of like kids and pets, right? And um, there's one like it was growing like perfectly like okay and beautiful. And I didn't even like miss with like uh, water or give it like FAE. So um, so the point here is like uh, 
uh, I always like uh, I talk to my mushroom babies uh, so I send them blessing and loving energy and then I also imagine them growing well because I believe in this Neville Goddard uh, the law of assumption and imagination creates reality okay so now let's talk about the last point which is also the game changer for me so when I was first started like growing um, this mushroom thing and uh, I was having some issue with tricks so I was kind of frustrated because I was thinking I'm pretty good with cleaning already, right? Uh, so I was looking up online to see what else I could do to prevent it from happening. Because uh, I believe in prevention rather than treating it. I believe it's much better to prevent the problem from happening in the first place rather than wait for the problem to happen and then treat it, right? So I was trying to find a root cause for it and then try to eliminate it. And so what I found is like there's this like secret ingredient you can add to the substrate. So apparently it should help to like decrease the chance for a trick to happen. So um, I found so this ingredient is lime. But initially um, I didn't um, I didn't have experience right. So I just bought like gardening lime. I thought oh if you can use it for a tomato or plants why not right. Of course you can use it for a mushroom right. So I used that and then uh, I also used gypsum. So I wasn't using that to prevent trick but just to um, I heard it's like a uh, a good ingredient to add like can get like bigger mushroom and healthier mushroom so I just trying that out and then I didn't do any pasteurization at all so I just add like the powder form into the substrate like that and oh my gosh that was like the worst nightmare I ever had so I never had like such a bad contamination like cycle just from like the beginning since I was growing right um, I had like a lot of the contamination and then I would even joke to my friend at that time I can start like a museum for like different type of mold right because um, I even had lipstick mold and I never had that before and a lot of the trick too and then so and I remember there was one type of mold that smelled really really bad um, I had to do some cleaning with baking soda and vinegar just to get rid of the smell so clearly that didn't work right so I was like frustrated but I learned from my mistake so um, I did some more research online and then I also talked to like some like uh, experts who are growing like mushroom for a while. So what I learned from is my mistake and then what finally worked was um, so it didn't work that time because so I learned that uh, you can't just add like powder lime um, to the substrate because uh, it can burn the mycelium and then when the mycelium is burned and then they're not gonna the mushroom's not gonna grow well right. So if they're not gonna grow well then that's when um, the contamination can attack them, right? So, so that's why it didn't work that time. So, um, so what worked finally was um, when uh, when I'm pasteurizing with boiling water for acquired vermiculite. So I will add in like the lime, and then I also change to all like everything food grade, because uh, for example, when I'm growing like lime spring for myself to uh, take, and then it's kind of like a food, right? So I want to be all food grade, so safe to eat, right? So I make sure all the lime gypsum are food grade, and also for um, for the uh, gypsum. So instead of just buying like a random one for drywall, um, I got like the gypsum that you use for um, beer brewing, and which is also food grade, so which is good. And so I will add like the gypsum and then the food grade lime while I'm um, pasteurizing the choir. Uh, with boiling water and the quantity so depending on like how big your container is so let's just say if your container is around like um, 60 liter ish that kind of size uh, I will add like a quarter cup of gypsum and then 10% of lime um, to the substrate so and then and then overnight I'll let the choir absorb that like uh, lime treated and then the gypsum uh, treated like the boiling water overnight and then the next day I will often pasteurize it. So this works because um, uh, lime increased the pH of the substrate so in this case like the choir increased the pH of choir um, so apparently trick they don't like environment with high pH they like like more like lower pH so that's why like, adding lime increase the pH, it can prevent trick from happening in your substrate. That's why it works. 
and um, so with uh, with this method like it eliminate trick for you but other contamination can still happen but I found like when if I follow these tips usually like um I don't have to worry about any contamination until maybe after like the later flushes like um the seventh or eighth flush so it worked really well for me and um, the difference I know with gypsum addition is like it gave me like bigger mushroom um yeah so um thank you for watching like and subscribing and uh, don't forget to download the cheat sheet to prevent trick if you're interested and I'll see you in another video. Bye.